when you arrive I'm going to ask you to hand over your documentation that I've specified you need to bring with you. I then scan that and keep that for insurance purposes. When you come into the vehicle there will be four documents waiting for you and I'll just go through each now so that you know what they are. This one here is a cleaning list and I'll use this to go through and tick everything to show that every interior surface has been cleaned and the product that we've used to clean it. One of the documents that will be waiting for you is the damage report sheet and this is what we use to check out and check in the motorhome. It has a note of the mileage and of the fuel and we ask you to use it to go around and check the vehicle for damage and just make a note of anything that you find. If there is anything that we're already aware of then it should actually be on the form already um, and then when you are ready to go we just ask you to sign it to say that you're happy and comfortable and feel safe using the motorhome and that you accept responsibility for it and we sign that and then we keep this and do exactly the same thing on your return, check the fuel, check that the motorhome is clean and the toilet cassette and everything is empty and then we'll date and sign that and give you a copy. With regards to the damage deposit, we aim to refund that literally the next day. Once I've cleaned the motorhome and just checked that there isn't any internal damage, um, then we will just refund that in full. If we did find anything, we would obviously give you a call and just explain it to you and just show you some photographs if that's possible of the damage and get a quote for any repair. So we wouldn't ever just take money off of the damage deposit without actually discussing it with you first. The second document will be laminated and will be in the driver's door pocket, which just explains what the emergency numbers are for breakdown recovery, what the speed limits are in a motorhome because they are slightly different than a car, how to drive it safely, uh, how to operate it safely inside, uh, what you need to do to return the vehicle to us um, and some other information on the back just again reiterating how to use some of the appliances in the motorhome. We do ask that you read this before you leave and we ask you to sign a form to say that you have read it and that you're happy that you know how to operate the vehicle safely. This laminated document is going to be in the driver's sun visor and it's just a reminder of the things that you need to check before you set off. So is the gas off? Have all the windows been closed? Is everything secure, etc. On the reverse is just a reminder of, of the dimensions of the vehicle. We provide a bottom sheet and a mattress protector for each bed and it's um, supplied in a clean cotton bag. If you wish to bring your own bottom sheet, that's no problem. Just let me know. We do insist that a mattress protector is used. If you have children and would like to bring your own, then please just let me know and we won't provide you with one because they are quite bulky and take up a lot of space. Um, and when you are uh, returning the motorhome, we ask that you strip each of the beds and put the mattress protector and the sheet back into each of these linen bags and they're just put straight into the wash so the amount, uh, minimum amount of contact on those. To operate the fridge, you press the square button on the left hand side, which will then light up the panel. The fridge will run from gas or electric cookup, also from the engine battery. To select the fuel type that you want, you just press the square and that moves along. That's gas, that's a hookup and that's a car battery. Now the A symbol means it will automatically select the fuel type that's available. So in this instance, it's trying to light it um, using the gas. These buttons here allow you to regulate the temperature and to get the illumination back on, you just press the square button again. This reduces or increases the temperature. If you have it running on gas, then um, it does actually get very cold and you'll find that things start to ice up at the back. So do keep an eye on that and reduce the temperature if you need to. If you have a little error come up on the right hand side um, with a little spanner, it means that you've possibly got the wrong fuel selected. So just scroll across and select the one that you want. But if you select A, in theory, you shouldn't ever have to touch the fridge. It will just select the power source that's available. The cooker has a grill function and an oven function and it also has gas and electric rings. The electric ring is only available if you have a hookup on the campsite. 
to use the oven you have to push that button into the left and then hold the igniter button and keep this button depressed at the same time and then that will allow the um, gas to light and then to use the grill function that just goes over to the right if you use a grill can you please remember just to pull this little metal tray out because it just protects the knobs from getting too hot the lid doesn't actually cut off the gas if you were to close it so please be careful when you have the gas or the electric hob on that you don't close the glass without remembering to turn them off and when you are using the cooker please ensure that you have enough ventilation by opening one of the vents or by opening one of the windows Each motorhome has a slightly different cupboard configuration, but they're all accessed the same way. Just pop the button in to release it and then slide the cupboard out. Please don't put anything heavy in the metal trays because they're only held shut with a little plastic clip. So if you put something heavy in there and go around a really sharp corner, the cupboards can slide open and we've had instances where they've come off the runner um, completely. So please put any tins or bottles into uh, the cupboard on the shelves that are actually in the middle and when you are driving please ensure that all the cupboards are locked by depressing the button. In most instances the bathroom light switch is located underneath the cupboard. This little blue button here is the flush for the toilet and each toilet has an indicator on it which starts off green when it's empty and then slowly goes red as it gets full. The toilet is used by just moving this flap over to the right which actually opens flap straight down into the cassette and then you just flush the toilet and when you're finished you close the flap over again and then that's all sealed. Each motorhome has a television and DVD player and the remote control for these can be found normally in the cutlery drawer. To operate the telly you just press the red button on the top of the controller and hold it down for a few seconds and it will then switch itself on. The television area is on the roof and it's fixed so you don't need to do anything to try and uh, tune it in. When you get to your campsite what you need to do is switch it on. This one is tuned in because I've previously tuned it in but if you press the orange AQT button in the middle of the remote control this screen will eventually come up and if you press OK to select country it will then auto search for any TV channels that are available and when it's finished searching it will then come up with this screen and you just press OK and that will take you to the TV channels because there is an awful lot to remember, I have provided a USB in each motorhome that's in the TV, which um, shows all the videos of how to use everything. So if you press, put the TV on and then press source, and then just scroll down to USB. And then move along to movie and just press OK. It then lists all of the um, movies that are available, just showing you how each thing works. Some of them are actually Benamar videos, which I've left on here, and there are others which um, are just duplications of what I've already sent you. To get back to the television from this location, press the source button again, and then just use the arrow keys to go up to digital TV and then just press OK. You can actually change the position of the television by um, just undoing that little uh, nut there and then just squeezing these two levers together and sliding it up or down and then when it's in the right position just tighten it again using that bolt. Please make sure that the television is pushed back against the wall when you're travelling 
and when you raise or lower any of the beds because especially in the 463 it's really close to the wall and to the bed so when you lower the bed if you haven't secured it to the wall then there is every likelihood that the television will get ripped off the wall so please just bear that in mind when you're actually going to, to drop the bed. When you want to use the drop down bed can you please make sure that the spotlights underneath the bed are switched off and that's the switch by the door on the bottom left hand side. The bed and the light switch is all on the same fuse so if you try to lower the bed with the lights on it can sometimes blow the fuse which you don't really want to have to change just before you go to bed. So to operate the bed you just press that button there and it will lower. The drop down beds each have a ladder to help you get into bed um, so the ladders just fit into these slots here and then you can twist that round like that which stops you then being able to knock the ladder out of the way so you don't get trapped in bed. When you want to raise the bed please make sure that all bedding apart from the bottom sheet uh, is removed so quilts and pillows are removed before you raise it otherwise um, it won't go fully to the top and it can again blow the fuse if you try to raise it with the bedding on it. When you're traveling, please make sure that all the ladders are placed sideways on the bed and not placed front to back, because otherwise if you broke really hard or accelerated, then they can um, sometimes fly forward. And make sure that all of your belongings are secure and placed in the cupboards before setting off, because again, uh, the second you go around the first corner everything will come flying forward so make sure that you check everything before you set off but that is noted on the card that we suggest that you read every time you um, move the motor home. Each window has a fly screen so you can have the window open uh, and the fly screen down and they also have a blackout blind for when you want to go to bed or some privacy if it's a large window, please use uh, two fingers to open and close the blinds because they are a little bit stiff. To open the windows, you just press the little button in the middle of the handle on each side and then just pop the window open. And to close it, you just pull it towards you and then just lock them shut like that. When you're traveling, go around and make sure that all of the windows are shut and that all of the catches are up. Uh, because if you drive along with the windows open, then they can, the wind can actually rip them off. Same as the roof lights as well. Make sure that those are all closed and secure. But again, that is written down on the list, which you need to look at before you leave. On each of the cupboards, there's just a little latch underneath the handle and you just push that to release the cupboard and then pop it back in and that's locked. The little LED lights are all switched on in the same way with a little switch underneath and there is a USB port at the top for you to charge your phone and things when you're in bed. When you're in the motorhome, if you want to lock this door, you simply press the handle and to open it, you just pull the handle gently towards you. If you're in the motorhome and you want to lock the cab doors, then you just push that button there and that locks the doors and that unlocks it. Bear in mind that won't close the habitation door. You have to physically do that by pushing in the handle to make sure that all of the doors are locked. This little button on the dash here is the alarm indicator and when it's flashing, it means the alarm has been set. Now, when you want to go to bed, you want to lock the doors and make sure that the vehicle is alarmed, but that the internal motion sensors are off. So the way that you do that is by putting the ignition on and then turning it off and then within five seconds pressing that button until it flashes once take your finger off and then press the lock on the key fob now that will reset and when that button starts flashing it means that the doors are locked and alarmed you still have to lock the habitation door but it is alarmed So now that's flashing, that means that the doors are alarmed and locked. And then if you want to dis disable that, you just press the unlock button on the key fob.
these are the little buttons that you need to press just to open and close the blind. When you're closing it, please make sure to remember that it's clicked back in place before you set off, otherwise they'll sort of travel across the screen while you're driving. When you want to use the side windows blinds, just to press those buttons there and very gently slide it across like that and then that just sits against there on the magnetic strip. And when you want to open them, again, just press those two buttons and gently slide it across. They are a little bit fiddly, unfortunately, so you have to uh, be very gentle with them because they're only made of paper. And when you want to push that back in, you have to guide the bottom across with your fingers and then just pop it in. All your crockery and cutlery and cooking equipment will be located in these drawers. It's all been washed between hires. I've put it through the dishwasher and then as soon as it comes out, we wrap them in cling film. So everything is um, completely clean and fresh for each hire. And in our 313 model, all of your crockery cutlery and pots and pans are located in this bottom drawer here. These little round openings are actually the heating ducts. Um, so if you want to check that the heating is on and working, if you just put your hand in front of one of those, you should actually feel hot air coming out of them. And they're located all around the van. Please make sure that either one of them is open if you have the heating on. Otherwise it can overheat if your vents are closed and you've got the heating on full. If you are traveling with children, we would ask that you have a blanket just to put across the seat here to put the car seats on and then you can just secure your, those using the two belt points here. If you are traveling with dogs, again, these belt points can actually be used um, for harnesses because they obviously have to be restrained while you're traveling. We would also ask that you don't allow dogs to get up onto any of the furniture or onto any of the beds. Fuse boards are located under the seat behind the passenger seat in our larger motorhomes. So if you need access to the fuse board, then it's just underneath this seat. Sometimes if you have an electric hookup, they do have power surges, which can actually um, trip the fuse. So if that happens, if your power just suddenly goes off and you can't work out what's happened, then you need to just check the fuse board. Get access to the fuse board just remove both the cushions the um, top cushion is actually velcroed to the wall so just be a little bit careful if you peel that off and maybe just hold the piece of velcro against the wall so it doesn't all peel off and then the fuse boards underneath here so that's the fuse board on the left and there is a packet of spare fuses in the glove box and then that's your trip switches under there. So if the power does go, just check that none of those um, have been switched off and just switch it back on again. If you have a 313 motorhome, the fuse board is located under the seat, just behind the driver's seat. And again, you just take the, both the cushions off and the fuse board and trip switches are just underneath there. And that is also where the boiler is located. If you have one of our 2020 model motorhomes, to release the extendable part of the dining table, then you just underneath, just slide that button down and then that allows you to move the table and then to lock it back into position, you just push that back up again. If you have one of the Fiat motorhomes, the seats swivel by just lifting that handle out and then just pushing the seat round. You do have to wiggle it a little bit um, either by taking the handbrake off, um, obviously don't do that if you're up on the ramps, um, or just sliding the seat forward and backwards until it actually it allows you to turn round um, without actually having to force it round. If you have our Ford motorhome then there are two levers that you need to use to swivel the seats. The first one is this one which just slides the seat backwards and forwards which you can use to manoeuvre the seat as you're turning it round and then this lever here just pushes out front which releases the seat and enables you to turn it again you do have to sort of 
drill it backwards and forwards to get it all the way around just trying to avoid um, catching the back on the table or the armrest against the handbrake. Thank you for taking the time to watch both the videos. We appreciate there is an awful lot of information to take on board and it might sound a little bit daunting at the minute but if you get stuck with anything while you're away please give us a call. Don't waste your precious holiday trying to work out how the water goes on at 10 o'clock at night when you're fed up and cold. Please just give us a ring and we'll go through it with you as many times as you like. We want you to be safe and happy and have a really wonderful holiday.